Hello and welcome to my studio. I am Leslie Ann Robinson of Knit Graffiti Designs and today I want to share with you how to work the elastic pico bind off which can be found in my Melu Run shawl and you can see it's right behind me here um, on the lovely daddy my dress form. So let me just take it off so I can share it with you. So this pattern will be released on May the 4th, Star Wars Day in 2023. This is my newest Star Wars inspired shawl pattern. If you know me, you know that I am a huge Star Wars fan, <laughs> especially the women of Star Wars. So this is my newest Star Wars shawl pattern. And if you're watching this later, then maybe it isn't my newest, but you know how it goes. So this is a half circle shawl. It's very, very large, so I can't show almost the whole thing in, uh, <laughs> in my screen, but you can see how big it is. And there's just a lot of different stitch patterns. It just makes it so much fun. And I used um, a lot of different yarn dyers for this shawl pattern. I used four different yarn dyers. But today what I want to specifically show you is how to work this lovely Pico bind off right here. Okay, I'll show, it, I'll show it more in detail in a moment when I'm sharing my hands to show you how to do it. Okay, so this technique is a combination of the elastic bind off, which is my absolute favorite bind off of all time. I use it for pretty much all my patterns. <laughs> so you might be like, oh yeah, I totally know that bind off. Um, and it's a combination of that bind off and the Pico bind off. So if you are a fan of the Pico bind off, that's what creates those beautiful kind of teeth to me they look kind of like little fringe at the at the edge of your shawl it's a great way to finish your shawl and also to have a very stretchy bind off because that's kind of key with shawls right to have them stretch out when you block them so I was working the traditional pico bind off where you do a traditional bind off and I found it wasn't as stretchy as I wanted it to be so I combined the elastic bind off with the Pico bind off. So hopefully you love it as much as I do. And here we go. Okay, I'm excited to share with you the elastic Pico bind off, which I used here in my Melu Run shawl. And I you, I, you can see here that I used a contrasting color to the previous color that I used. So you can use whatever yarn you want, but make sure that you do have quite a bit of it. I mean, I, you, de you definitely want to make sure that you have a lot of yarn if you're using the bind off for this shawl because it has over 500 stitches on it, okay? So I wanted to actually combine the elastic bind off with the Pico bind off to make the shawl super stretchy here at the bind off edge. You can see how stretchy this bind off is and it creates a beautiful accented edge to any shawl design. I feel like it's very Victorian, like it almost looks like fringe a little bit. So yes, I'm gonna just jump right in. Uh, when you work this particular bind off that I'm showing in this tutorial, you want to make sure that you have multiples of three stitches okay so for instance the shawl has 513 stitches okay so you just want to make sure that you have a multiple of three stitches I'm gonna show you on a smaller shawl sample okay so here this is kind of the beginnings of my Melu Run shawl I have 33 stitches on my needles I am using the Farmer's Daughter Fibers Foxy Lady yarn, okay? This is um, a single ply yarn. This is one of my absolute favorite yarns of all time. Um, it has a merino silk blend, which is absolutely delightful. This is just leftovers from my shawl pattern um, where you can see I did use it here at the end of the shawl as well as at the beginning of the shawl pattern. So, oops, I almost ripped. 
my shawl. Okay, so I'm gonna be using the same yarn um, that I used for my bind off, which is Hedgehog Fibers and their sock minis. Okay, I actually had quite a bit left over. I had enough for the bind off, plus I have some left over to share with you in this video. How amazing. So again, uh, you feel free to use, you know, the same color yarn as what you just ended with. You know, if you're, you know, maybe you're modifying a pattern that you're working on and you want to substitute this bind off for, you know, whichever is called out in the pattern. Okay, so this is a very striking bind off and it's also very stretchy, okay? It's a beautiful accent to any shawl pattern. Um, it can also be very beautiful for like the, the cuff of socks if you're knitting toe up socks. So in um, I'm gonna be using my color A yarn. So in my pattern, this is my color A. Again, use whichever yarn you want. So I would break this yarn, right? This yarn would be done. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to cast on two stitches using the knitted cast on method. Okay, so I'm going to leave kind of a tail for weaving in later. And into this first stitch, I am going to knit one. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to place this stitch on my left hand needle. And I'm going to do that one more time knit one, place the stitch on my left hand needle. Okay, so I've just cast on two new stitches in my color A. So it, with this particular bind off that I'm showing you, all of my shawl stitches are going to be in the pink and my newly cast on stitches and bind off stitches are gonna be in my color A, okay? So now I'm going to bind off five stitches using the elastic bind off method. Okay, so kind of think of it, let me just show you in the shawl itself. You kind of wanna think about it like the more stitches you bind off, the bigger your gap will be between each pico. So what's creating this little, you know, tooth, I guess you could call it, is when you're casting on those new stitches. Okay, so I'm just casting on these stitches here, and then I'm going to bind off five. So I'm going to bind off those two new cast on stitches, and then I'm going to bind off three shawl stitches. Okay, so let me show you. So to work the elastic bind off method, you're going to knit two stitches. And again, these are the two stitches that we just cast on. And then I'm going to slip these two stitches over to my left hand needle. And I'm going to leave my right hand needle in the backs of the loops because I'm going to knit them together through the back loops. Okay, so I just bound off one stitch. And I'm going to knit one again. Slip them over to my left hand needle, leaving my right hand needle in the back loops. Knit them together through the back loops. So two stitches have been bound off. I'm going to knit one again. Slip those two stitches to my left hand needle, leaving my right hand needle in the back. Knit them together through the back loops. So that's three stitches bound off. knit one, slip them to my left hand needle, knit them together through the back loops. Okay, so that's five stitches bound off. I miscounted earlier. So you can kind of see how the pico is forming there. So I bound off, you can kind of keep track, like if you ever have to set this down, you know, um, mid bind off. You can keep track by counting how many shawl stitches have been bound off. So as long as three shawl stitches are in between each pico, 
then you're going to start over your picot again. So you're going to repeat, you're going to place this final stitch back on the left hand needle, okay? And then you're going to repeat steps one through three until you have bound off all stitches. Okay, so I've placed my finished stitch back onto my left hand needle and I'm going to repeat steps one through three one more time. I'm going to cast on one stitch using the knitted cast on and then a second stitch and then using the elastic bind off I'm going to bind off five stitches. So it looks like I have three stitches here, but this is actually going to end up being bind off two stitches and then three stitches from the shawl itself. So I'm going to knit two, slip those two stitches back to my left hand needle, knit them together through the back loops, knit one. So just bound off one, knit together through the back loops. And just bound off two, knit one, slip to my left hand needle, Knit them together through the back loops. Just bound off three, knit one, slip them to my left hand needle, knit them together through the back loops, and that's four, knit one. Okay, so here's the pico. The pico is going to really be where you cast on those new stitches, okay? So then wherever you have the shawl stitches, you're just going to be working a traditional elastic bind off with those stitches, okay? So you can see the picots beginning to form. Now I'm going to place my stitch back on my left hand needle as step three. I'll continue that again, step one going to cast on two stitches using the knitted cast on. One. Two. Bind off step two. Bind off five stitches using the elastic bind off method. So I'm going to knit two, slip them to my left hand needle, knit them together, oops, knit them together through the back loops, and then just con you'll continue this, knit one. So these are the shawl stitches. Sometimes it's easy for me to kind of count the shawl stitches as I'm binding them off. And then step three, place your finished stitch back on your left hand needle. So there we go. Now your elastic bind off is starting to form and you will continue repeating steps one through three until you have bound off all of the shawl stitches, okay? And then at the end, you'll repeat steps one and two so that you have a final pico at the end of your shawl. And I'll meet you back here to work that final pico, okay? Okay, so I'm coming up on the, my last repeat of steps one through three. So I'm going to knit them together through the back loop. So I'm binding off the five stitches now. So 
So there's my last shawl stitch. I'm going to bind one off. So now I have one stitch left. I'm going to place that on my left hand needle. I'm going to cast on two stitches. So I'm working step one again. And then I'm going to bind off these final three stitches so that I have one little, oops, I have one little pico at the end. So bind off one, and then bind off two, and then for my last stitch, I break the yarn, and then I'm going to kind of made a loop here. I'm going to pull my yarn through that loop. So this is my end. And then what I'm going to do, I'm going to get my tapestry needle out of my little cat case. I always, I'm really picky about the size of my tapestry needle with fingering weight yarn. If I can even get it. There it is. So I'm going to weave in my end here so that this last pico mimics the other picots. So see how it's kind of like the end has sort of shimmied itself off of the shawl. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this end and I'm going to weave it back in on itself here so that it creates a pico at the end there. And then I'll just weave in my end as usual. Okay, so doing that, move my needles out of the way. So now you can see, I have a little stitch marker so that I know which is the main side of my <laughs> little shawl. So now you can see how beautiful this bind off is, but you can also tell how different this is um, unblocked, okay? So when I blocked my shawl, I gave it a bath, and then what I did was I actually, I have lace blocking wires, and what I did was I placed the wire through the top of each pico, and that really helped to stretch them out. Obviously, you can also pin each one out individually if you have enough pins to do that. I did not have enough pins <laughs> to do that. So the lace blocking wire really helped kind of block them out so that you can really see the difference. Let me share, let me show you. Blocked, here this is unblocked versus blocked. So you can really see the difference of how exaggerated the picots become once you block your work, once you give it a bath and then block it. So I hope that this tutorial was helpful for you and I hope you like this bind off. I really, really love this bind off and this is my first time using it. This is my first time using any Pico bind off, but um, I really enjoyed it and I plan on using it in a lot more designs. And uh, I hope you enjoy knitting my Lou run if that's what you're making. And thank you so much for watching my video. I will see you in the next one.